Good afternoon. This is Howard Wig giving a commentary on a possible solution to our immigration crisis. First and foremost, this is my opinion alone, not anybody else's. As we know, one of the worst crises that President Biden is facing is the immigration situation on our southern border. We know why hundreds of thousands of people are clamoring to get to our beloved country, and they're coming mainly from El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras. Why? Those countries are notoriously corrupt, have been for decades and decades. And now, added to that is climate change, which isn't doing their hot weather any good, and maybe most importantly, gangs. Drug cartels are, I wouldn't say ruling the roost, but they are very, very powerful there, such that a boy growing up there, reaching adolescence, will be encouraged, quote unquote, to join gangs. Girls, when they reach adolescence, will be encouraged, quote unquote, to become the girlfriends of gang leaders. The unemployment situation is very high. They're living in a, in a constant, not just poverty, but danger also. So no wonder they're trying to make it to our country and they're willing to risk, what is it, a thousand miles of going through Mexico, nothing safe about that. Once they get stuck at the border, nothing safe about that. And something that is, a dilemma to us is that we Americans like to think that we are taking the moral high ground. And here we're leaving these thousands of people stranded. I believe in February, there was 100,000 apprehensions. That means people were caught trying to come into the border, come over our border. What I suggest as a solution is not refugee camps, but refuge camps in each of these nations. First, we would enter into agreement with leaders of the three countries. Then we would send down the Army Corps of Engineers and establish big camps outside of cities or outside of large towns, especially where the problems are especially evident. These people coming down, Americans would be uh, familiar with the culture and fluent in the Spanish language. And as the work was developing, local people at every turn would be employed. And the end result would be a whole series of tents or small modular homes surrounding a central area where there were showers, bathrooms, cooking facilities, schools, a store, administration, all the basic needs of life, just within easy walking distance of each of these living units. And it would all be, everything would be run by locals, except that at this point, special forces from our military, specially disciplined forces, would be on site living in a barracks there, and they would supervise every step of all operations in the camp, because again, corruption is rampant. Gangs will try to do all kinds of nonsense. It'll be their job to keep the all functions running smoothly and safely. The area would be surrounded by a fence, again, heavily guarded, and there would be a lot of shade out there. Why? Because there would be thousands and thousands of solar panels, photovoltaic panels to make electricity plus battery backup so that the whole tent or camp would be entirely electrically self-sufficient each living unit would have a energy for a fan, for lights, and for entertainment or computer purposes. 
and we would start small and expand as if demand exceeds supply, we expand, expand, expand. The end result would be to create a safe haven in their own country for tens and tens of thousands of people so that our border situation would be tamped down and down and down and we would be doing a humanitarian favor for these people to give them jobs, safety, schools, medical facilities, all that's needed for a, not a luxurious life, but down there, a decent quality life. And we Americans would once again be taking the moral high ground. Thank you very much.